If you find the default WooCommerce product page design bland, or you just want to create something just a little bit more unique, this tutorial will show you how to do that and more. In this sponsored video for Shop Engine, I'll show you how to build your own custom product page for WordPress and WooCommerce. So by the end of this tutorial, you'll know how to create your own single product template, customize the design, and set it as the default template for all of your products. Okay, so let's just fire up WordPress and get started. So this is the type of design we're going to be working towards in this video. As you can see, it's a custom designed product page. You can see we've got a variable product, so we can choose various different variations. So if you want to check a small version of it, you can see, and that'll update the price. We've also got the fact it's in stock, the description, add to cart, the quantity. We can add it to our wish list feature and so much more. You can see we've also got additional images down here. So if you want to take a look at some of the other images, we can take a look inside there and we can scroll down. You can see we've got a review section and right at the bottom, we've got the you may also like so we can upsell various different products or related products. So let's take a look at how we can build something like this now with Shop Engine, the free version. First of all, let's go ahead, install the free Shop Engine plugin. I've already gone ahead and done that, but all you need to do is go over to the plugin section, choose add new, search for Shop Engine, install and activate. Once you've done that, you'll have a new section under Shop Engine. Inside there, we've got various different options, but what we're interested in right now is the builder templates. So once you select that, that will show you all of the templates you've created, whether they're active or inactive, and what type of template they are. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a new single product template. You can see I've already created one in the past, but I've set this as inactive so we can create something totally new. Let's click on Add New, this allows us then to choose the name, the type of template, to set it as default, and also choose some of the pre-built templates that we can use them exactly as they are, or just as a starting point. For this example, we're gonna give this a name. We're gonna call this single product template. Single is perfectly fine. We do have additional options inside there. We're gonna set this to be the default, and we're gonna say save changes. That's now created that template for us and saved that as the default. You can see there's our template, there's our type of template, and set as default. Let's go ahead and edit this with Elementor. And once we open up Elementor, we can see we've got a lot of new options on the left-hand side. You've got Shop Engine General, so things like you can search, apply filters, and so on. And we'll come back and take a look at those in other videos in this series. What we're interested in, though, is the Shop Engine Single Product section. And as you can see, there are a lot of different options inside here to customize how your shop page is going to look. So now we can go ahead and use all these new widgets to create our custom layout. We can use all the familiar tools we have inside Elementor. In this example, you can use all the free tools. You don't need to have Pro installed. You just need Shop Engine and the free version of Elementor. So now let's go ahead and start building our page out. So let's start by creating a hero section at the top that includes the name of our product and the price as a nice clear section that allows us to see exactly what product we're looking at. Let's click to add a new section. We'll choose this single row column. And inside there, we're gonna just set a background image. So we're gonna come over to the style option. And inside there, we're gonna come down and choose background type and set this to be classic. Now we can go ahead and choose an image. I'll choose this one. And we'll say insert media. You can see that now places the image in the background. We just need to configure the way this looks to make sure everything looks nice and neat and tidy. Set our position. We're gonna set this to be bottom center. Attachment, we're gonna to set to fixed. We're gonna go ahead and set the repeat to be no repeat and the size we're gonna to set to cover. Now, obviously this doesn't look very good because it's just a little sliver. Let's correct that. Let's hop over to the layout section, come down to the height and change this to minimum height. We're gonna set this to be viewport height, and now we can adjust this to whatever value we want. So let's say set this to something like 40%. There we go, that looks a lot better already. Next, we're gonna go back to the style option, and inside there, we're gonna set a background overlay. We're gonna set this to be a gradient, and you can see this now pulls in a default gradient look. We can adjust the opacity, the angle, the colors that are used, all those kinds of good things. So let's set the first color. We're gonna just choose one of our global colors. So we're gonna set this to be white, and we're gonna do exactly the same on the second color. Select one of our global colors and set this to white. So now what we can do is we can adjust the actual opacity. We're gonna set this right the way up, and you can see that just basically takes everything to white. But now what we can do is we can go ahead and we can adjust these colors. So let's select the first color chip. You can see we can adjust the opacity and we can create this nice gradient effect. So we're gonna take that right the way down so there's nothing being shown. So now we've got all of the picture going through to this nice white effect where it fades away. Pretty cool. Now the last thing we need to do is deal with this extra space we have here. 
The reason we've got this is because the header template in this example, because we use an elemental, has got some padding or margin set on it. So we need to counteract that. So we're going to make sure we've got this section selected, hop over to advanced, uncheck the margin option so they're no longer linked. And then in the top, we're going to set this to be minus 70 pixels. And you see that now positions that right up where we needed to, still allowing the little drop shadow effect from our header to overlap the image. So again, pretty cool. With our hero section all set up, the next thing we're going to do is add in the elements that we want to display. In this example, the title and the price of the product we're currently viewing. So to do that, we're going to come back to our little set of widgets, we're going to scroll till we get to the shop engine single product, and inside there we can now choose any of the options that we want. Titles, prices, those kinds of things. So for this example, let's grab the product title. We'll drop that into the top section. You can see that now pulls in this example. So we're going to align this to the center, and now we can go ahead and configure the styling for the typography. So let's tweak that now. We'll adjust our weight. We'll set this to be all uppercase if it's not already. And we're going to go ahead and make this larger. We'll set this to about 66. Let's make that a little bit thinner again. There we go. That looks pretty cool. And if we want to, we can adjust the line height and the letter spacing, all those kinds of things to get everything looking spot on. So there we go. There's our title for our product. So next, we're going to come back to our list of widgets, and inside there, we're going to go and find the price. We can come to the top if we want to, and we can search. And you can see we've got options, and anything that's got this little symbol in the corner, this little shop engine symbol, that's a shop engine widget. So we're going to drag the product price in, we're going to pop that underneath, and then we're just going to configure this as well. We'll set this to be centered, and we'll leave the styling roughly as it is. That looks okay. Do one more little thing. And we're going to come up, we're going to find the separator just to give us a little bit of visual separation between the title of the product and the price of the product. So let's just quickly adjust this to what I want. I'm going to set this to dotted, about 25%. We'll center it. I want to adjust the color and the spacing. So we'll remove the gap. Weight is perfectly fine. And we're going to set this to be our white color. I'll quickly come in and adjust the opacity. There we go. Now that we've finished with the hero section for our product, let's move on to the main product details section and start by adding in the main image. Let's create a two column section. And we're gonna put our image on the right hand side and our gallery images in there, and our description and those kinds of things in the left hand side. So let's come back over to our widgets. We're gonna scroll down until we find the option for the product images. So we'll grab that and we'll drop that into the right hand column. So you can see that pulls in the relevant image. Now, if we're working with image gallery, so we've got additional images, they'll also show up inside here as well, because this is the collection of images. If you don't have any, you will just see the single product image. If you want to, you can enable or disable this badge. So you can see currently this has a special offer of 13% off this particular product. However, we can, if we want to, simply disable that by using the checkbox. Let's just re-enable that. And if you want to change the icon that's being used in the top right-hand corner to open the light box up, you can change that from the icon library or upload your own SVG file. You've also got full control of the styling for the border radius, the columns, the row gaps, those kinds of things, including the light box zoom icon and your flash badge sales. So if you want to change the color of that, we can simply come in, choose one of our preset colors. So we'll choose this lighter lime green kind of color. And there we go. So you can see we can easily pull this and make sure that everything looks exactly how we want, including the position of this. And we can come in and we can set custom values inside there as well. So lots of control of exactly how this all looks. So next on the agenda is to add in the content in the left section. So let's come back to our widgets again. We're going to scroll down. And this example, we're going to grab the product description. So we'll drag and drop that into the left-hand column. And you can see there's our product description. So now we can come in and adjust the typography on this to make sure that everything looks exactly as we want. We make that line height just a little bit larger. And if you want to change colors, those kinds of things, you can do all of that inside here. Let's come back to our options and we're going to grab the add to cart. We're going to drop that underneath. And you see this now gives us a lot of different options to control exactly how this looks and the features that we want to include in it. So at the moment, we've got the quantity, which you can manually type in, your add to cart, your wish list, and so on. We can go ahead and we can adjust these if we want to. So currently, the button start is set to default. However, we can change this to put both sides, and that will allow us to have the plus and minus to increase or decrease the quantity of products we want to add to the cart. You can go ahead and set this to be both on the left-hand side or both on the right-hand side. Entirely up to you. I'm going to set this to be on both sides. You can see I can also change the icons that are being used from the icon library or upload our own custom SVGs. 
If you want to also th do things like show in the stock status, add variations, data ordering, those kinds of things, you can set all those values up inside you, including the order of these different kinds of product variations and so on. In your style section, you can see we can easily come in and adjust all the different values for every different element in this particular widget section. So if you want to change the button, for example, you can see we can come to the add to cart, we'll change the background color and use one of our global colors. Again, we'll choose that lime green kind of color. We'll remove this border width, so we'll set that to be none. And you can see we can adjust things like radius, padding, and so on. So let's just take the radius off there, set that to zero, so we get a nice squared edge button. Pretty cool. And you've also got control then over things like your variations. So you can see the label, the description, the price. So if you have products that have variations and you want to control exactly how that all looks, positioning, styling, those kinds of things, all the controls are inside here for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and add just a couple of more items to this particular section. So let's go back to our widgets and inside there, we're going to do a search for the product stock option. So we're going to drag that and place that above our add to cart just so we can see if this item is in stock or not. And again, we've got control over the styling and everything else to go with this. So you can see if it's in stock, we can set the color. So let's again change this to be the color that we want. Uh, we can set out of stock and you can see that's set to red and that's perfectly fine. And if you allow back ordering, you can also set how that looks inside here as well. So the final thing I want to add to this section is which category a particular product is in. So let's just search for category and you can see product category list and product categories. We'll grab the first option and we'll pop that underneath the add to cart. This is a quick and easy way of allowing people to just quickly navigate to other categories that your product may be in and take a look inside there. If you're using reviews on your e-commerce website, this feature is super easy to add to our template using Shop Engine. Okay, so let's do a search for reviews and you can see there's our reviews option. So let's grab the product review and we'll drop that into this section underneath. And you can see this pulls in some predefined examples. Great to allow us to go ahead and control exactly how this all looks. So what I'm going to do for this example is I'm going to make a little bit of space around this. I'll worry about styling separately. So let's just come in and we're just going to say we're going to add a little bit of space above and below. So let's go for something like 45 pixels. There we go. That gives us a bit of breathing room. So now we've easily come in and set this up. And if we want to go ahead and configure how this all looks, we can do that inside here as well. So we've got all the styling options and we can come in and we can do things like the submit button. We'll go ahead and we'll change the look of that. So the normal option. So we can see we can set the background. And again, we're going to just use our green color inside there. We're going to set the border to be none so everything is consistent and also take the border radius and set that to be zero. So now we've got the button that's in keeping with the styling on the rest of this particular page. Now I've already created a style for the way I want this to look. So I'm going to quickly apply that to this particular container. So just paste my style and there we go. There's our style set up and we're going to select this section and we're going to just come in and we're going to set the background color and set that to be white again using one of our global colors. And all we're going to do is come into the advanced section and put a little bit of padding around this, say something like 40 pixels. There we go. So now we've just styled everything just to make it look a little bit more in keeping with the design that we're creating here. Now upselling can be very lucrative. So adding in related or upsell products to our template is going to be a vital part of the design. So let's go ahead and add this feature to our template right now. So adding related products is incredibly easy. Again, we're going to simply come down and you can see there's a related products option inside here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new section, single row column, and we're going to just go ahead and add that widget directly into that. Drop that inside there, and you can see that now pulls in the relevant products. So now we can go ahead and we can configure this. You can see by default, it's all set up to be a scrolling section, which allows you to display multiple different products, especially if you have a large shop. Let's go ahead and tweak the look of this. Now, I don't want this to be a slider. I want this to be static. So I'm going to disable the slider option. You can see that still gives us more options. Do we want to display the flash sale, sale price, card button, and so on. For this example, let's just disable all of these so we can see what happens. So you can see that now gives us the products, which we can click and go and take a look at. We've got the details of the products, the price, and we can add to wish list, quick preview, those kinds of features. So now we can go ahead and just fine tune this to get exactly what we want. You can see the products to show, we can set the number inside there, the number of columns to display, and we can control this on the different devices. So desktop, tablet, mobile, those kinds of things. I'll leave those values as they are for now, but if you want to get in and adjust this, you can do exactly that. And you can see there's some pre-built values inside you. So you don't really need to worry too much unless you want to fine tune and tweak things. If we hop into the advanced section, you can see we can just adjust the order by, so it's currently set to random, but we can set this to be menu order, ratings, popularity, the price, those kinds of things, and whether we want to set this ascending or descending. 
If you hop into the style section, then we can go ahead and configure this to make sure everything is looking exactly as you needed to. So let's just set those to be centered. You can then see we've got each individual section. So images, title, rating, price, and so on. So we can adjust those inside there. Now, finally, we've got this global font option. Now, this is available in pretty much every widget inside Shop Engine. And what this allows you to do is if you want to, you can set a custom font that will only be applied to every single font that's being used inside this specific widget. Not every widget used from Shop Engine or not global, just this particular widget. So if you're not using global styles inside Elemental, you could do it quite quickly inside you by just setting the font family for every individual widget. However, I would still say using global styles is probably the more straightforward and quicker way of working. But this option is there should you need it. For now, let's just say we're happy with everything we've done in this design. We don't want to tweak anymore. Let's just update this. And this is now committed the design to be used as the template for all of our individual products. So now that our design has been completed, let's take a quick look at this in action to see how it all looks on the front end of our website. And here we go. There's our final design. You can see everything we've just created is inside here. Our header section with our background image, our title, price, and so on. Our custom layout. We've also then got the option for any of the different size products. We can add anything we want to the cart. And once we've chosen an item, You'll see the add to cart button becomes available. And now we can go ahead and we can adjust the quantity if we want to inside there. And if we come down, you can see there's our review section. And right at the bottom is the list of related products. So we've now created a totally custom design for our individual products. Shop Engine makes it easy to create more unique designs with WordPress and WooCommerce. If you want to learn more about working with Shop Engine, then take a look at this playlist next. It's full of incredibly useful tutorials and tips. Now, as always, all of the applicable links are in the description below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.